Hello, welcome to Deb's Kitchen in the Cabin. Today we are going to be making easy ultimate lasagna. We are up in the, our family vacation in the mountains of Green Valley Lake and we are going to be preparing our dinner which is lasagna for a crowd. First, first you want to turn your pan to say medium high. I'm putting in uh, one and a half pounds of ground beef. I'm going to be putting in a whole package with a 16 ounces of Italian sausage. We're going to, I'm going to kill my sausage because I prefer to break it down along with the ground beef. So I'm just going to show you one. I cut the skin casing because it's all encased in skin to hold it together. I'm going to put them in there and I'm going to do this till all of them are soft. Okay, my ground beef's in, my 16 ounces of sausage is in. I'm going to give you a little tip to hurry your meat along. You don't want to burn it. So I'm going to put some water in here, half a cup. I'm going to cover it, and when it starts to break down a little, I will uncover it and break the meat down more. Okay, so I'm turning it over because it's browned on one side. And we, I really like the meat to get caramelized. I think it imparts great flavor to your meat sauce. So, turning this over, and I'm going to break down what I can on my ground beef. The sausage was a little bit frozen, so it was semi-defrosted. So we're just going to cover this. While my ground beef is cooking, I'm going to make the mitapla that goes, and that's just a medley of vegetables that goes in our com um, component of our bolognese sauce. So I'm going to chop down a half of, well this would be equal to a small onion, two celery stalks, probably about two carrots, which I've chopped in half and some fresh basil from my garden. And so I'm going to chop this down and I'm just going to give you a little sample, but I don't, so you can see how it's done. Normally I use my food presser, processor, but we're in the mountains and not everyone had modern conveniences in Italy. So we're going to do it old style. So we're basically going to mince your celery down like this and then I'm going to add all to the bowl same with the carrot cut it in half face it down so it'll be easier to cut then I'm going to do the same thing and I'm using these knives here from the mountain so bear with me people remember keep your fingers in you don't want to chop up any digits people and these knives could be sharper, but we're in the mountains and you make do with what you got. You have to be able to go into any kitchen under any circumstances and without modern conveniences and work with what you got. And sometimes it's just a good old knife. So I'm going to dice all this down. And then I'm going to dice some um, basil. I'm going to show you how I'll do that. And then I'll bring you back when it's all done. So I'm taking off the stems. It smells really good. And you just kind of bundle it up in a little bundle. Easiest way to do it. And then you watch your fingers. And then you just chop it. So I'm going to do all this. And I'll bring you right back. Okay, so I'm dicing up the vegetables. You want to get them to a fine dice if you can that will melt better together when you fry them. And this mirepoix, mirepoix you're probably wondering what's that fancy name? It's basically a French uh, word for a uh, medley of vegetables that a lot of cooks use to start out sauces. So we're going to saute these in a minute. Okay, we're breaking down our sausage and I'm going to add about tablespoon, I mean, uh, half a tablespoon 
of pepper while I'm at, at it. Half a tablespoon or so of sea salt. And a generous tablespoon of Italian seasoning. And this has all of the Italian seasons in it. It'll give your meat a good taste. So I'm basically going to crunch all my meat up and then we're going to drain it once it's all mixed in together. Okay, finally chopping the last of the veggies and I didn't realize how much I rely on my food processor. This would be done in a minute, everything. But since I only have to rough it, like the old Italian mamas. Just make sure all your vegetables are this consistency. Fine dice. And then we're gonna drain the meat, which is done. Come over here. It's done. I'm gonna drain the meat out and then I'm gonna cook everything in the same oil. I have to break down my meat with this potato masher. And it's easier to break it down when it's cooked. I don't want it to big chunks of sausage. I wish I had my meat cutter here, my Pamper Chef meat cutter. I didn't realize how much I rely on it. So now we're just gonna drain all the meat out. And I don't even have a drainer here. So you use whatever you have at these, and this is what I have at the cabin. I'm gonna save the oil, because we're gonna saute our veggies till they're nice and caramelized and soft. Our meat is drained out, so we're adding in all our veggies. And we're just going to saute these until they're soft. And that's probably going to take about five minutes. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to the vegetables, apart from already seasoning the meat. Just a dash of pepper. And I'll be back with you in about eight minutes. Okay, our, as you can see, our vegetables are starting to get there. But I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil because it needs more oil to break down the vegetables. That's about a tablespoon. And we're going to stir it about five more minutes. Okay, sometimes you make mistakes and what's the Italian <laughs> recipe without garlic? It's coming a little late to the party, but it, it'll make it. And as you can see, the you saw me break it down. I just got a flat knife and hit it with your palm. Knock the garlic cloves out. And then, same thing. You just get it here and hit it out. And it'll be easy to peel and then you're going to dice it. Don't forget to trim off these hard edges. You do not want to break your tooth on the stem of the garlic. And it's a good thing I'm adding the garlic last because garlic burns easily anyway. So any recipe always tells you to add it at the end. So we're okay. Okay, so I ended up using the whole bowl of garlic because what's Italian cooking without molto garlic? And although I'm not a trained chef, so those of you that are watching, don't expect French techniques, Italian techniques, Food Network Technique. This is in Deb's Kitchen, Deb's Way, easy and super delicioso. Garlic going in, and I'm only going to saute it a few more minutes because it's almost done already. And as you can see, I've transferred my meat to a big pot because we're going to start adding all the sauce. Okay, so our mirepoix, or let's say vegetable medley, is almost done. And to this one, I'm going to add a little bit wine to deglaze the pan. The different recipes call for different methods. There are so many different ways you can do it. And in different regions of Italy, there's even different techniques they use. But this particular technique is one of the recipes I, recipes I found that I like. <clears throat> Normally, I take different components from recipes I like when I research and I think to myself, oh, this will be good. So I add that. Some restaurants 
I mean, some uh, recipes call for you to add mushrooms here, but I'm just adding what I have shown you today, and then we are going to start adding the sauce. So I'm stirring all this together, all the veggies and the meat, deglazed with wine, and I'm going to start adding my tomatoes. This is uh, 14 ounce of whole tomatoes, Italian style, you can look in there. You can use anything you have. I'm using what I have. And this is um, diced tomatoes, low sodium. They're diced. And then I'm also using uh, and the diced tomatoes is 14 ounces. And the 28 ounce of crushed tomato. This is going to form the basis of our sauce. And traditionally they want you to uh, let this go about anywhere from one to five hours. So I'm putting it on, I'm going to give it an hour or two, but I'm adding in a can of traditional pasta sauce that already has all kinds of spices in it because I'm not going to cook it as long as you usually do to let the spices marry. And I'm going to add some more Italian spice and I'm going to put some fresh basil leaves To give it that Italian flair, just like that. And then we have it right now on medium high, but I stirred this up and we are just going to let it simmer on low for about two hours. And then we're going to start making our lasagna. I'll cook the noodles when we get ready to assemble our just lasagna. Okay, here we are. Now, <coughs> excuse me, we have my little grandson Teddy with us on this vacation and he asked to help so I'm going to let him help me a little. I want to encourage my grandchildren. We're making the ricotta filling. So first I'm going to put in a 32 ounce container of ricotta cheese. Then Teddy, you're going to put in this half a cup of grated parmesan. Be very careful all of it and I just bought it already grated then Teddy I need you to put in an egg for me put that egg in there let me make sure I don't get no shells do you see shell yeah, there's one okay put it in there good boy egg. you want to try breaking the other egg he washed his out break it right here on the wood oh I know let me see Okay, now pull it apart where the hole is. Pull these two apart. Oh yeah? Pull it from the crack. Okay. I see a little piece of egg shell, so we need to get that out. Now pour it in. Then we're just going to stir it all up and set it aside in the refrigerator. Can we it right now? Yeah. Until we get ready to assemble it. So that's all normal. Okay, I yeah, put that in. And then we will work on our bechamel in a few minutes. Okay, here we are. Our Bolognese sauce is done. Taking out that basil. But look, it's perfect. We've had it on the stove slow simmering for about two hours. So now we're going to get our pasta noodles ready. So I'm going to put pasta water ready. Put in some sea salt in it. Whenever you're making pasta, always salt your water. And we're going to put that on high. When it comes to a rolling boil, I'm going to put in a pound of lasagna noodles. I'm not going to cook it as long as it suggests. I'm going to cook it two, up, two minutes less because I don't want my lasagna to be too mushy. So now we have the water boiling. I'm going to concentrate on shredding all the cheese. Parmesan cheese, mozzarella, and an Italian blend. So I'll be back. Okay, so I'm gonna need five cups of cheese for this recipe, and I'm gonna use this skim mozzarella. So I'm gonna just shred up all this, and I like to use the Parmesan block of cheese. It's better than the packaged. And then we will set it aside to use when we assemble our lasagna.
I'm going to leave this simmering on low because the longer it cooks the better. The recipe had called for the rinds of the Parmesan and I forgot that step. I don't know why. But suppose they get it uh, umami. So I'm going to put that in and that will just go until I'm ready to assemble my lasagna. I forgot to mention I'm going to add a cup of this Italian cheese blend and it has Parmesan, Asiago, Romano and Fontina. Those were other options that they said you could use. And since we're making this the ultimate, we are going to add this to the mix. And extra cheese never helps. I mean, never hurts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our water is ready. It's a rolling boil. This is what a rolling boil looks like. Not just little bubbles, but you can see it rolling around in there. We're going to add our lasagna and we're going to cook it uncovered. It says here for eight minutes, so I'm only cooking it for six minutes or less. We'll see. I'm not putting them on top of each other. I don't want them to stick, so I'm kind of crisscrossing them. We're making our bechamel and I'm doubling the recipe, so I am using six teaspoons, tablespoons of butter and six tablespoons of flour and then I'm going to whisk it when I'm out. Our six minutes are up so I'm draining the noodles and set them aside because our bechamel is almost ready. As you can see it's melting. Come and take the pan in. So I'm going to add six tablespoons of flour, but I don't have the correct measurements here in the cabin, so bear with me. One. We're going to whisk it together for one minute. And a little salt and a little pepper, and then we'll add our milk. Yeah. One and a half cup of milk gets stirred in, and this is what makes our bechamel. And it's basically a cream white sauce. As it thickens, I'm going to add the rest of this Italian blend cheese just to give it that extra pow. I forgot I was doubling this, so I actually needed three cups, so I'm adding one and a half cup more. This is thickening up real nice, so I'm just going to add the rest of this cheese in. And then we're going to start assembling. Coming together really nice. Okay, look, our bechamel is ready. So now we're going to assemble. I'm going to put some of this on the bottom, the bolognese sauce, just to get us started here. And then we're going to take some of our lasagna noodles, place them down in the bottom. Make sure your hands are clean. I'm going to overlap them a little. So I'm going to put some of the bechamel on here. I'm making a mess, but everything that's delicious. <laughs> messy. Okay, so now we got that on. I'm going to put some more meat sauce. Generous. Not that rind. We're going to put some cheese. We're making layers. And we're going to do the ricotta layer separate. So this is my mixed cheese. I'm going to put some on top of there. And then we're going to put another layer of noodles. I'll be back. Okay, we're putting the layer of ricotta. I like ricotta. Some people, the Italians, will just use nothing but the bechamel and their marinara homemade. But this isn't homemade, is it? This is Deb's ultimate lasagna in Deb's kitchen made. Let's try it out. Tell me how you like it. You can always kick it up any way you like. 
So we're putting this ricotta to the end. Then I'm going to put some more of this cheese. And then we're going to layer it uh, how we started in the beginning with the noodles, the meat sauce, and then continue on to the end. Okay, this is the last layer of bechamel, the third layer. And I put in this bechamel and meat sauce on top. And then I put in one more layer and ricotta and meat and we're done. Okay, this is the fourth layer. And I put a layer of ricotta and putting meat on top. I reheated my oven to uh, preheat it to 350. I'm going to bake it covered with foil for 45 minutes. And then I'm going to uncover it, put the cheese on the top because I don't want it sticking to the foil. And then I'll bake it for another 20 minutes. And then we'll be ready to manja manja. If you're liking what you see so far, don't forget like, subscribe, hit the notifications so you can be aware when I'm in my kitchen. I'm going to be going out a lot more in the weeks to come. So I will see you in a few. I'm going to put some cheese on. Even though it's going to stick, I'm going to put some toothpicks to hold it up. And always, and as you can see, this is a big casserole. So I'm going to put it in the oven with a tray underneath because I can guarantee you it's going to bubble over. I'm going to tense my foil since I'm in a cabin and they have no toothpicks. So hopefully it won't stick as much. And like I said at the end, I'm going to add cheese anyway. I'm going to try to cover this so it won't spill as much. Okay, so here we go. Into the oven. Ooh, it's very heavy. Be very careful. And make sure you have that pan underneath to catch the overflow. 350, I'll see you in 45. But we're putting more cheese and then we're going to put it in there for 20 minutes so it can bubble up, get toasty, golden brown. Here it is, our ultimate easy, well, not so easy, but worth the wait, lasagna. It's been cooking 60 minutes, 45 minutes covered and 15 minutes uncovered. You can cook it longer if you want the cheese to get bubbly, but my family is starving. They smell the food. And here comes little Charlie. She wants to eat. And Teddy wants to eat too. And so we will be... And me too. Come here, Charlie. And we will be eating right away. The little children are all hungry. Are you guys hungry? Yeah. Does that smell delicious? Yes. Like pizza. And say, what do you tell them? To Thank you. Say like and subscribe to my Nana's Kitchen. Nana's Kitchen. And leave your comments. Uh, tell me to try this. And we will be having a blessed dinner. Dinner.